You know, sometimes I amaze even myself. That doesn't sound too hard. So today I decided to do the Barbenheimer thing and I went to our local AMC that was showing it and got <clears throat> into an early uh, seating uh, show for Barbie. I'm going to talk about that first and then about I walked in as um, the uh, <clears throat> uh, the stupid previews which went on eternally were going on uh, during Oppenheimer, so I was able to see the whole thing. Uh, I can safely say they're both great movies in their own way. Um, I suggest that you have the bladder the size of a cow because uh, by the time Oppenheimer is finally over, it's pretty much like, okay, I can't do this anymore. So let's talk about it. So they're two diametrically different movies. One is a I'm going to say it's a fantasy, but it's also a comment on society and women, uh, women's roles, men's roles, too. Uh, and uh, I think it's it's one of those things, the reason why people are going to it is because it talks about the real issues without saying it out loud. I will get more deeper into that. Oppenheimer, obviously, is the biography of... Uh, the theoretical th physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer, who um, basically, with the team of scientists, invented the nuclear, the atom bomb, and on his watch, the hydrogen bomb was created. So let's talk about Barbie. First off, Margot Robbie was great, uh, and I, and I want to add this: Helen Mirren is the narrator, and when I realized it, the movie just got way better. Going back to Margot Robbie's performance. She plays uh, the character, stereotypical Barbie. There's President Barbie, there's Dr. Barbie, there's, you know, Space Barbie, there's a Veterinarian Barbie, all, the, all the, the, the Barbies that have identities. She's just Barbie. And she does a fantastic job um, in the way she approached uh, the character, in the way that she... Um, discovered who this person is, who this doll person is. And then we got to go to uh, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling was, I think, probably the weakest part. Uh, he was funny. He was goofy. Um, but he was kind of like, played Ken as if a five-year, you know, an eight-year-old girl would be playing with Ken. Um, and it's kind of interesting uh the music he's got a good voice i have to I'll, I'll give him that he's got a good voice the songs were great when they used push that fit what happened because what was going on in <clears throat> ken's uh in ken's perspective was that uh he was second fiddle he was this he was only there for one purpose and when he gets to the real world, he discovers the many opportunities men have and takes back with him and causes all kinds of trouble. But I don't know if it's his, his fault. However, I have to say this. Michael Keaton was a better Ken than Ryan Gosling, and I will die on this hill. That uh, uh, Toy Story 3 was hilarious. It was hilarious. And he was, I think, the funniest part of it. Um, so there, there's the uh, whimsy. They don't have any whimsy. However, go back to what the movie's about. The movie's about constructs um, when at the end where uh, the real, uh, basically Barbie's owner starts basically explaining what it's like to be, try to be the perfect woman. <clears throat> and... It kind of breaks, it kind of, kind of like makes the guys, all the Kens, because there's many, kind of realize they need to be Ken, their own Ken. 
And while Barbie world is back to being Barbie world, and that, and that Kendom, I personally thought Kendom was hilarious. Um, uh, there, it, was, it was interesting because the perspective that they put in this, that Greta Gerwitz put in this, was the patriarchy isn't real. Men go through a lot of, of their own insecurities and failings as well. I mean, Ken is told that by, by an executive. So <clears throat> the, the reality of, of humanity, I think, and the kinds of social constructs that we've created for ourselves are, are at times false, okay? Little girls playing with Barbies and ignoring Ken is what little girls do. However, Ken, if Ken is real, then he needs his own <clears throat> image. And I didn't really get any woke stuff from it. Um, uh, I didn't really feel that uh, there's anything like that in it. Um, and at the end, uh, Rhea Perlman, by the way, plays uh, the ghost of Barbie's creator, Ruth Handler, and she basically helps Barbie discover uh, something very uh, interesting. Now, <clears throat> this movie could not exist in any other time but this time, and it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a thing where it takes on feminism and stands, stands it on its head because it... Barbie closes her eyes and sees visions of motherhood from tiny babies to a, a grandma. Grandma's dancing, Nona's in Italy dancing, whatever. And uh, that to me was Greta Gerwitz saying women can be anything they want. Don't, don't sell motherhood short. Um, it had a different feel to it, I would say, and I would say uh, this movie isn't what uh, <clears throat> the people who want to hate it think it is, and it's, it's something, I think, of a come-to-Jesus moment in Hollywood because it's actually doing very well with zero, zero woke shit, okay, and I think it's great. Now, let's go to Oppenheimer. J. Robert Oppenheimer was a theoretical th physicist who created uh, the first atomic bomb uh, in uh, in the world, uh, and it's about the Trinity the Trinity Pop project. Um, and <clears throat> he went through a very moral crisis throughout creating uh, this weapon. Uh, he would he'd be talking to you know some young man who said. I did bomber missions uh, over Germany, and I saw buzz bombs flying over our planes, and I can't imagine what, what it would be like if one of those, you know, buzz bombs, they, they were German rockets, had a warhead on them. And it, it's a it's Christopher Nolan um, <clears throat> movie, so you're going to have, you're going to have metaphysical things going on. Oppenheimer had was not a communist, but he's connected to them because he dated a, a, a woman. He was a communist. His brother was left the party, and uh, he got himself into a lot of trouble um, after the war uh, because he started <clears throat> basically saying we need to do something to regulate these things, and people want to hear about it. They want to hear about it. Uh, discovered that the German that he brought over from England, who was a physicist, actually was the one that gave Stalin the secrets to the nuclear bomb. Okay, so that's how that happened. Oppenheimer didn't know he had did it, didn't know it was him, but that's how it happened. Uh, Oppenheimer's wife Kitty was an alcoholic, long-suffering through all of his... Uh, uh, nefarious affairs. This is Robert Downey Jr. as Lewis. Uh, uh, Lewis. 
he played Louis Strauss, uh, and Strauss had a love-hate relationship with Oppenheimer that spilled over into um, <clears throat> the Truman administration and uh, into uh, a, a general a General Eisenhower's presidential administration. And it was during the Red Scare. Um, if you even sneezed out of your left nostril, they would uh, drag you out in front of the 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 Hayes uh, the uh, committee. Um, and Oppenheimer had a grandiose idea of himself, but he um, he's so, he's hard to explain. Uh, he was a theoretical physicist who didn't really like math. He hated the lab. Uh, he went to Holland uh, to study under Niels Bohr and then to Germany where they were doing a lot of, uh, of that theoretical physics that we weren't in the United States. He was the one that brought it back. He was, he was the pioneer. Uh, he was a very well-known to Albert Einstein. And uh, he, this is a guy that when you look at him, you kind of go, I don't understand you. There are some people so brilliant, they can't be touched. But I think the thing about it was when the Trinity bomb went off and they were watching it, and Oppenheimer says, I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. That's a quote uh, from a Hindu text, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, I think. And... Um, he called the, the 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 where they were the bomb uh, Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So, in some ways, I think he realized that they had tapped into something no man should tap into. Okay, this is God's realm. Now we have Gary Oldman as Harry Truman. He did an excellent job as always. Uh, one of my favorite actors. I uh, really, really. Uh, maybe not as good a job as um, Gary Sinise did in 1995, but still well worth it. And, uh, of course, Tom Conti as Albert Einstein, excellent. Um, very interesting. Uh, they, uh, they, they come full circle. And we find out what Einstein actually said to him there. And you see Lewis... Uh, standing behind them and it, it's 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 poetic but you know as barbie is for kind of asking questions about uh social construct and and how men and women are supposed to behave um oppenheimer is a, a story about a not so good man because someone paid him in a good light who stumbled across through mathematics theory and a lot of other things, the power of God, and realized, I think, deep in his heart, he never should have had his fingers anywhere near it. And honestly, I think that's what, the, that's what that movie was about. But again, both movies are completely different. And I am going to say this, Barbie is not for children. Okay, it, it's really not. It's, um, it's not parody, it's satire. To be honest, it's satire. Oppenheimer is biography, and it's a pretty uh, realistic uh, painting of Robert Oppenheimer. I do believe Killian Murphy will win the Academy Award. I think Robert Downey Jr. will uh, win one too. This is Steph signing out. I'll see you on the galaxy. May the force be with you.